the cause and solution to most of the problems that you're going to experience as you're growing your agency is people. People will cause you more problems than anything else. They will also help you solve more problems than anything else. So how are people the solution to the people problem? Well, let's just unpack this for a second. As you grow your agency, there's only really three ways, this has been said by many people, there's only really three ways to grow a business, any any type of business. You put your prices up and charge more. So that's a great solution because you don't need to have any more clients. You just charge your existing clients more money. Now you might lose some clients as a result of doing that, which in some cases is excellent. That's a great outcome. Less people to worry about, more money from each person. By the way, if you double your prices, you need to lose 50% of your clients and you're still even. Typically speaking, you might lose a third. It's called the lazy tax. Especially if you're in a service-based business like an agency or an accountant or a lawyer, who wants to switch accountants or lawyers or agencies? And you've got to tell your whole fucking story again. You've got to start from scratch. So you put your prices up, people pay the lazy tax by not moving and just staying with you because it's easier than switching banks, right? Do you know what I mean? It's easier just to stay with the current service provider than switch. It takes time to switch. And if you're talking putting your prices up by like a hundred, you know, hundreds of dollars a month or even a thousand dollars a month, well, how long is it going to take them to find another provider? Hours. And then the risk of the new provider getting it wrong could set their business back three months. What's that worth? A setback of three months is worth a lot more than a thousand dollars a month. So putting your prices up is nowhere near as scary in reality as it is in your mind, right? The other way to grow your business is to just attract more customers, keep your pricing the same onboard more customers. More headaches because you're dealing with more people, more human beings. Human beings are a pain in the ass. We're sentient, emotional beings. We have needs, right? We have mental health problems. We have personal problems. We have baggage. We have moods. We have expectations. We're a pain in the ass. But that's another way to grow your business. Another way is just to get more transactions from your existing customers, right? So keep your pricing the same, just sell more shit to your existing customers, right? No more people involved, just more transactions. Usually in the agency model, the way people grow is to attract more clients. And what happens is agency owners, I'll talk a little bit more about the potential end game for agencies, right? Agency owners, as they grow their client base, they realize that they can't do everything and they need to start hiring people. They start hiring people to deal with people that they've onboarded as clients. And this becomes problematic because you've got people on your side serving people on the client side and both of those people have different sets of expectations and both of those people have their own baggage and their own emotional stuff. And usually as as an agency owner, you get to a point where you're just playing kindergarten cop for your team and your clients and it's a nightmare. You end up hating your own business. I've had conversations with plenty of agency owners who are ready to burn the whole thing to the ground and go and work at Walmart. Now, there are some solutions here, which I'll share with you in a moment. But first of all, before I get there, I want to talk about the, the, the typical trajectory of an agency and where it ends. Agencies are really hard to sell, usually because they rely on one person, the agency owner, to either weave the magic wand or bring in, make it rain, right? It's usually the agency owner who has a professional network and relationships within that professional network that bring clients in. And it's their IP and their experience that usually drives the team and the strategies. So it's really hard to sell because you've got what's called key man influence. There's a key person, it's called key man influence. I didn't make it up, don't shoot the messenger. It's called key man influence. There's a key person in that business that the business relies on. And so that reduces dramatically reduces the multiple that you could potentially get when you sell an agency. A software company, whole different ball game because it's not relying on people, it's relying on robots to deliver the value, way more scalable, way more valuable to sell it, right? So selling an agency, possible, really hard. You typically might get three to six percent, sorry, three to six times your net profit or EBITDA, which whatever you call it, depending on the hemisphere that you live in, we call it net profit here in Australia. So if you're making $500,000 $500,000 net profit a year through your agency, and you've done that consistently for three years, and hopefully it's growing, right? But your average is 500 over the last three years, 500 a year, the last three years, you might get one and a half to three mil for that agency if you're really, really lucky and you sell it to someone who really wants to buy it and has big upside. You sell that agency to another owner, the operator who's gonna come in and, and run the business, you're not gonna get that much. 
and typically you're going to vendor finance that deal, which means I sell it to Michael, but Michael pays me the money out of future profits, and then I'm on the hook to mentor him for the next three years and make sure he doesn't fuck it up. That's the way most small businesses get sold. The other uh, option is to pull as much profit out of the agency as possible and use that profit to build wealth using other strategies like property shares, crypto, whatever you fucking do, right? And that's totally fine. You should talk to your accountant, your financial planner about that. I am not that person. I'm not here to give you wealth advice. I'm not qualified to do that. In fact, I'm not qualified to do anything except flap my gums in front of a camera connected to my computer and stick it up on the interwebs. So don't take advice from me at all on anything, period. Okay. However, if you are running a profitable agency, you should be pulling some profit out and putting that profit into other things and not just pissing it all up against the wall or spending it on guitars. The third option, which is the saddest and the most tragic and the one that happens the most is that you get to the end of the agency life and you're tired and you just shut it down and you haven't got a nest egg somewhere else because you've spent all your profit on AppSumo lifetime deals. You've got 1,300 software licenses saved in one password and you're fucked. You shut your agency down (laughs) and you're cooked, right? You've got all this software. You've got no clients anymore. You're tired. You're going to retire and you end up living in a caravan. So that's where that ends. (laughs) And that's the most tragic outcome. Ideally, I would like outcome two for you, right? If you can sell it, that's even better. Happy days, right? You live in Australia and you sell your business for a million and a half, it's probably not enough to retire, so you're going to have to do something else anyway, so you might as well just keep running the agency if that's what you know how to do. The reason I'm telling you this is because if you want to sell the agency, you need to build a team. If you want to have your agency generate a lot of profit for you and have time to use that profit to do other things, you're going to need to build a team. If you want to just work in the agency and have yourself a job for 20 years and then retire and shut it down, totally fine. You don't need to build a team, right? I personally wouldn't recommend that because I don't, I, you know, there's just no, there's nothing in it. At the end of the day, there's no leverage. You're going to burn out. It's not fun and there's no payoff. And it would be a shame for you to work that hard for that long and not have something at the end of it, right? So as I said, if you if you want to just pull the profit out and invest that in property and you can do that without a team on your own, then good for you. Well done. Excellent. Send me an email and tell me how you're doing it, will you? But most agency owners at some point are going to have to build a team. And I've said this in previous videos, the order in which you do this is the two mistakes I've seen agency owners make. One is they hire too quickly. They don't have enough money in the bank or enough cash in the pipeline or enough recurring revenue, which I'll talk about in a sec, to make the hire. So they hire someone and then three months later, they've got to fire someone because they're running out of money. Recurring revenue is the holy grail because it gives you that predictable cash flow and that predictable money coming in and the predictable profit margins. You go, we can hire someone because we can pay for them. Because it's predictable. The business is predictable, right? You want to get around a book called The Automatic Customer by John Warrillow, if you haven't already. Fantastic book on turning just about any business model into a subscription-based business model. Recurring revenue is the holy grail. It's why software is so valuable to acquirers because it doesn't rely on key people to go out there and do the song and dance and make it rain. And it's infinitely scalable and it's usually all sold on recurring revenue. So it's subscription income. It's the holy grail of all businesses. Do whatever you're doing right now in your agency turn into recurring revenue. And I mean serious recurring revenue. You should be, your number one focus should be to get to a bare minimum of 30 grand a month in recurring revenue. Otherwise you're just not in the game as far as I'm concerned, right? You're just not, I mean, you've just got a job. You're not a business owner. You've just you, you just got a job, which is fine, but it is what it is. Let's be honest about it. So 30K a month in recurring revenue, that gives you some flexibility and predictability to start hiring people. The other mistake I see people make is that they worry about their processes and their operations and they automate the crap out of everything and they have, you know, Airtable talking to Zapier, talking to ClickUp and all the bells and whistles and the ding-dong bells going off and they have no clients because they've spent all their time automating their processes and documenting their processes into this beautifully hard leather bound folder, which says, this is how we run the agency. Gee, if only we had some clients, we could do all of this for them. So you don't need all that before you hire people. Now, quickly, I'm going to give you a book recommendation. And the biggest shift that we made in our business when we were hiring people is we scrapped the job description because a job description is basically a list of tasks that someone is going to do. And it is based on a false assumption. And that assumption is that if I'm hiring you to do something and I give you a job description, that I actually know how to do the job. And most entrepreneurs and agency owners are crap at most things. They're good at a couple of things 
and most often they're high level visionary big thinkers. They're not good with the details. They might start off good with the details, but as they grow, your head gets out of the details and you start thinking about bigger things. So a job description is based on an assumption that you know how to do the job and then you're hiring someone to follow your process. Bad assumption. The other problem with job description is it's not outcome driven. What if they do all that? I did exactly what you told me to, boss. Well, we still went broke. What happened? Well, what you told me to do was the wrong thing because that's not actually what our clients wanted. They changed, but my job description wasn't allowed to change. Their expectations changed. I just kept doing what you told me to and they all canceled and now we haven't got any money. If it's outcome driven, and by the way, the number one outcome is customer satisfaction. So everyone's job scorecard should be reflecting customer satisfaction. Like everyone on the team should be working towards customer satisfaction. If it's outcome driven, then the process can change. As Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face and then your plan changes. But the outcome doesn't change. Stay on your feet and win the fight. That's the outcome. I'm going to change my tactics. Yeah, you do because you've got to pivot. Things, you know, innovate or die. Things have changed. The market's changed. Expectations have changed. We've had COVID. Internet usage has gone up. Consumer expectations are a lot higher. Now there's a global recession. There's inflation. Interest rates are going up. Discretionary spending's come down. Things change. It's a dynamic marketplace. And you've got to be able to pivot your tactics, but don't take your eye off the outcome. And that's why I alluded to this before, job scorecards have replaced job descriptions in our business and it's what we suggest for everyone. I didn't make it up. This comes from the great work of Jeff and Brad Smart over at Top Grading. The book I would recommend you read is simply called Who by Jeff Smart, who I believe is Brad's son. Check it out. The big takeaway from that book, and it's a bit dense and it's a bit, uh, you know, complicated, but the big takeaway from that book is the job scorecard. Just adopt job scorecards in your agency because they're outcome driven and don't worry too much about the process. Just know the process will change and it has to and it should and it should be fluid and it should be dynamic, but keep your eye on the outcome. How are people the answer? People, if you bring in good people, give them outcome driven job scorecards, they will help you design processes and keep your customers happy and they will free you up to think about where you want to take the business. All right, I hope this is helpful. Wherever you're watching this, leave a link underneath this video with the word help. If you want our help to implement this in your agency and one of our team will reach out to you. Otherwise, you can just email support at agencymavericks.com and we'll get in touch. Uh, We probably can't help you and I'm not being a smart ass. I'm just saying this like completely factually and truthfully. We're good for about two or 3% of the people that watch these videos. The rest of you, we probably just can't help you. We're not a good fit, which is totally fine. Enjoy the videos to form a light entertainment. I hope you're having a good lunch while you're watching this wherever you are. And uh, maybe we'll hang out one day at a live event. We'll have a laugh about it. But for those two or 3% who are right, reach out. We'll have a quick chat and see if we can work together. Uh, And also let us know what you want to learn next and, and the topics that you want me to cover here in these videos. Just leave a comment in the video. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Bye for now.